Hilda just launched its third and final season, and this is perhaps the most magical season of them all. Today, let's break down the season as a whole, with a particular focus, of course, on the lore of the fairies, which wasn't always clear in the show, and the real-life inspirations behind it are very mysterious as well. Hilda previously had two seasons, and then a movie that seemed to wrap everything up, particularly for the town of Trollberg. The story felt so conclusive that the movie ended with a time jump, showing the characters much older, something that usually happens at the end of the story after the characters are done emotionally growing. But of course, while Trollberg had made peace with the trolls, there were still a lot of questions that remained about Hilda and her own life, and this season focuses almost entirely on that and a lot less on the new species, outside of course of the season-long focus of fairies. Spoilers ahead for those who haven't seen the season yet. The season opened after the time jump, with Hilda and her friends now being much older and finally having come into themselves. This is illustrated best by David, who was known for being kind of lame in the early seasons, and is now a lot more confident in who he is and what he's been through, and honestly just feels a lot more like the generic teen boy he is now. All of the characters have grown emotionally a bit as well, with Hilda trying to make a point of taking time to relax and not force an adventure the way she did when she was younger, though she still of course loves adventure overall, and even her most sincere attempts still end in a magical time. The season doesn't have a singular location, but takes place all over Hilda's world and even other timelines of it, with the first episode bringing Hilda to her mother's supposed hometown, Toffetan. Toffetan isn't right in the middle of troll country, so they don't need weird walls to keep everyone inside. Instead, this town is constantly on edge because of the fading presence of the supposed fairies, which are considered to be imaginary by a lot of Hilda's world, despite a lot of other magical creatures running around. Hilda wants to investigate the fairy theme that the town has, and when asking around, she gets a lot of the same information we get in real life about fairies, with just as much contradiction. They are called fairies, or fair folk, or the fae, and they can be small or not small, some are said to have wings, some not, and some are said to be friendly, and others luring children away for mischievous reasons. This mirrors the real-life tradition of fairies, which we honestly have a lot less on in terms of writings compared to a lot of other mythologies and their creatures. Now, most places in history had a strong oral tradition that was used to pass down this sort of information, but in some parts of the world, the oral tradition would be supported by mythic texts, which didn't serve as a comprehensive guide, but rather a bouncing off point for the larger oral tradition to remain consistent around. The best example of this is the already very lengthy Old Testament of the Bible, whose oral tradition is so long that some attempts to transcribe it, like the Babylonian Talmud, have 73 volumes commenting on it. Mythic traditions in Europe, as well as in earlier migrations, seem to pride their oral tradition over public writings, even in cultures that had developed such systems. Even after the advent of writing, many cultures refused to put their stories into writing, as there were layers of these stories that were considered to be secret and to be unraveled over time with the proper guidance, with the text risking too much of that being exposed to those who aren't ready. Many cultures would eventually give in to writings of texts, but would try to make them simple and succinct so that the oral tradition, the conversations about the stories and their real history, could be the primary focus. As such, our understanding of fairies is something that never had a singular sort of canon to keep itself consistent around, though all the different ideas of fairies blend together to be about the same historic idea, it seems. Hilda's world operates very similarly with its understanding of fairies, with Hilda finding mostly dead ends in a world where magical creatures have so much concrete lore. Hilda becomes suspicious, however, when her great-aunt Astrid is putting strange charms around what happens to be a giant fairy mound in episode 2. In real life, the fairy mounds are said to be naturally forming hills, or else burial mounds left behind by very early European peoples, something we also see in the Americas. After hundreds and thousands of years even, their purposes have been forgotten, but they became very noticeable in certain parts of Europe. When Hilda removes her great aunt's charms, she and Frida are suddenly trapped in a sort of parallel horror realm, or the fairy dimension. European folklore warns against children playing on the fairy mounds or in fairy circles, which were seemingly natural arrangements of mushrooms or plant life in a circle or even more intricate pattern. Interestingly, despite the legends of these mounds serving as warnings of potential curses, some stories existed of people falling into the mounds also becoming blessed. 
The earliest ideas of fairies as beings that give blessings seems to come from them being elemental spirits of sorts that date back to the Greco-Roman tradition of nymphs, who could bestow blessings on people by healing them, for instance. In the second episode, however, the fairy dimension appears to be very spooky, with Hilda and her friends being stalked by mushroom monsters, and then two strange hooded figures before being pulled by Joanna and Astrid back into the real world. According to Joanna, she was lured by a fairy as a small child into that same mound, but Astrid saved her just in time. According to Astrid, the place they saw was a sort of middle dimension between Earth and the Island of Fairies, with those strange flying mushrooms being called the Eyes of the Fairy Isle. Astrid claimed she put the charms there to protect Hilda, but because Hilda removed one, she seemed to get sucked right in. Hilda's mother, Johanna, never had much of a logical story in the season 1 premiere. She lived alone out in the middle of nowhere with no husband and just her daughter in a place that was known for pretty dangerous wildlife. Even there, she had mixed feelings about Hilda going out and exploring, and now it makes so much sense. She moved out of Toffetan when Hilda was a child because she was afraid of how children can be lured into the fairy mound by fairies, and Hilda's entire life had been just about that sort of adventure. Her experience with the fairy mound shaped Johanna, and it makes sense that the same fear would bubble up out in the rest of nature as well. Thus, moving to a place surrounded by walls probably was a really big move for her that, in hindsight, highlights just how afraid she had been of the world overall because because of her experiences as a child. Of course, Johanna doesn't have the best memory of her childhood for reasons we will discuss later, but her motives throughout the series only get deeper and deeper with every revelation. Now, this season has a shorter episode count overall, but that's only because the final episodes were merged together for an extra long finale similar to the movie that followed up on season 2. This means that there is technically only 8 episodes this season, with only 3 of them being about the fairy plot, but the third one is more than twice as long as your average episode, and really the story feels very complete. The episodes in the middle deal largely with Hilda's typical adventures with magical creatures, with a few more monsters, but with it mostly taking the time to revisit old favorites, like an episode where all the Nyssa start a lending library, and a really beautiful episode about the conflict with the giants. The most important of these middle episodes in the season were the ones where Hilda was reunited with her father, and another where we got a glimpse of the past of Hilda's mother, Johanna. Hilda's friends, like me, just assumed that something had happened and Hilda's father was just dead. But it turns out he's the kind of man that says he's an adventurer and then doesn't stick around to take care of his kid. He comes into town to visit Hilda, who helps him get a job that turns out to be for a criminal trying to steal a troll's hoard of gold. This episode was emotional and ended with his disappearance, with Hilda thinking he had abandoned her yet again. Interestingly, it showed that Hilda's hair doesn't match either of her parents, with her mother having brown hair and her father having orange-looking hair. Instead, Hilda's hair looks more like her great-aunt Astrid, which is faded and gray but still has the hints of blue we will see in later flashbacks. Additionally, while out camping, Johanna stumbles upon a place that she doesn't remember consciously, but clearly has a subconscious memory of from the art she draws, and we later learn that she and her parents came here as a child and ended up trapping the strange monster there with some magic fairy charms. All of this set up an extra long finale, where Hilda realizes that her father is trying to contact her from the strange fairy island she almost got stuck on, and thus she rushes off to save him with her friends. Hilda goes into the mound, leaving her friends behind, and jumps on the boat to find her father, who quickly runs into her. We learn he's been staying with the weather lady from season 2, who is fascinated by the fairy isle. Hilda's father, however, has no idea how he got there, and seems to have been transported there after his adventure with Hilda, nowhere near the fairy mounds of Toffetan. Here, he and Victoria Van Gale have been hiding out in the middle world between Earth and the Fairy Island, trying to avoid detection from those sentient mushrooms. When trying to leave by boat, Hilda and her father are haunted by those two cloaked figures that she first saw and who have since persisted in her dreams. She and her father manage to get through a portal that Frida creates, but once Hilda realizes that her mother went into the Fairy Mound after her, Hilda jumps back in this time to save her mom. When Hilda returns, she is not in the middle world, but seemingly on the actual island of fairies, a place that is mostly a mushroom paradise, alluding to fairy circles being generally made up of circles of mushrooms. Hilda ends up running into her mother here, who is taking the form of a little girl, indicating that this world isn't as physical as the earthly world. 
Interestingly, Hilda's child mother claims that she's there because her mother went off to the fairy world and tried to leave her behind. This is the vague essence of the story Johanna remembers as an adult, which was being lured to the fairy mound by a fairy. This young version of Johanna has a lot of lore about the fairy world, claiming the island has gone into decline. She says that in the past, new arrivals were a regular thing, but fairies hide from them now, and have even driven out most of the other magical creatures that once lived there. Among those who are still around are some of the Wafts, though all magical creatures of Hilda's world are said to come from here. Eventually, Hilda does stumble upon some fairies, and even gets wrapped up in a musical little dance with them in a circle, highlighting the stories of fairies being friendly creatures that actively enjoy interacting with humans. The next day, Hilda and Johanna find what Johanna is looking for, the two hooded figures that had been haunting Hilda's dreams, which of course turn out to be Johanna's parents, thus Hilda's grandparents. This revelation causes Johanna to turn into an adult, where she is at first happy to be with her parents again, but where she suddenly thinks that her parents abandoned her to come to this place and that Astrid erased her memory. Now, Astrid did erase Joanna's memory, but it was only so she wouldn't remember her parents and be drawn to the fairy mound to try and be with them, leaving Johanna with her last memory of her parents in the mound at age 10, with her thinking she had been lured in by a fairy before Astrid saved her. From here, Johanna is told the story of how her father, a fairy from the fairy isle, fell in love with her mother, a human from Hilda's world. Johanna's father, Phineum, and his sister, the Great Aunt Astrid, were fairy children who liked to cross over to the realm of humans, or what they called the Overworld, indicating that their space is something below the realm of the physical, and perhaps even depended upon it. Here they met Johanna's mother, Lydia. Together, the three had a wonderful time playing as children, though it was forbidden for fey folk to interact with humans when in the Overworld. Despite this, it led to Phineum and Lydia eventually falling in love, and one day, Astrid comes in to check in on him after a long visit away from the fairy isle to find that Lydia is pregnant with his child. It's here that we also discover that the home of Hilda and Johanna in season one that they first moved into after moving from Toffetan was actually the home of Johanna's parents, something they still owned even after moving to Toffetan to have a home with room for Astrid. Astrid finds this pregnancy foolish at first and explains that it's been getting harder and harder for them to leave the island, hence why Phineum had probably been taking longer and longer stays in the overworld. Astrid worries that Phineum will get trapped on one side or the other, but Phineum has already decided to stay in the overworld to raise his daughter. The fairies being able to leave the Isle less is explained a bit more later, but alludes to the decline that Johanna had mentioned when traveling with Hilda as a child. For a while, they all lived peacefully in the overworld in Toffetan, but Johanna got very sick very early on, and her parents turned to the fairy island to make a deal, with a sort of power above the general fairies that they are. This greater power is called the island spirit, and agrees to heal the child, but only if the spirit can take the child in 10 years back to the fairy isle. Not wanting Johanna to die that night, they agreed. For 10 years, they lived the best life they could with Johanna, but then made another bargain to go in Johanna's place. Astrid then wiped the memory of Johanna, who developed a fear of fairies and later the magical creatures of the world as a whole. Being reunited with her parents and getting her memories back is a bit of a healing moment, but it does take a bit of a dark turn later when she regresses to a child again. Hilda likes being part fairy and likes the fairy isle, but feels it's wrong to leave her friends behind, and interestingly, hates the idyllic existence the fairies seem to have. Hilda likes adventure. It's part of why she likes what the fairies call the overworld, and part of why her grandfather seemed to want to go there to begin with. The fairy island is a paradise where all you do is experience relaxation and enjoy food that grows endlessly. It is a very obvious Garden of Eden parallel, with Phineum and Lydia both being the forbidden fruit, which symbolize the coming together of the lines of fallen angels and the lines of humans in the Book of Enoch. Phineum, the fairy, is a fallen angel, and Lydia is of course a human, representing Eve. The island spirit didn't have any interest in Joanna as a mystical half-child, but instead seemed to be setting the parents up to inevitably choose to give themselves up instead, allowing for fresh blood that the spirit seems to need, and perhaps also severing one of the last of the fairy folk from the overworld, allowing Johanna to grow up without as much attachment to her fairy lineage, even with her Aunt Astrid around. 
When Hilda misses her friends, the fairy family reveals special towers that the fairy folk used in the past to observe humans from their realm. Apparently, it can even be used to take people to the fairy isle, which is how they abducted Hilda's father, which was to save him, of course. Hilda can't use it to contact others, only to spy on them or kidnap them, and that isn't enough for Hilda. These towers seem to be a bit sinister, and while new people were once a regular thing, it wasn't always a positive thing, it seems. The fairy isle is idyllic, but seems very isolating. It takes a particular kind of spirit to want to be restrained to it. It makes you immortal and in a way ageless, with Hilda being stuck the way she is and never growing up, something that is scary in a cartoon that has actively shown the characters grown emotionally and physically in the last season. Hilda is rescued in the end by Twig, who from season 2 we knew to be from a species of magical deer foxes that create magical bridges that connect to other worlds. At least one other world they can connect to being the fairy world, which Hilda assumes they came from as well. Astrid needs to make a deal for this to work, however, because Johanna being reunited with her parents broke the last deal where her parents took her place, and thus when she returns to the overworld, she becomes sick again unless someone convinces the spirit to take her place. The spirit doesn't like Astrid's demands, and Astrid tries to call out the spirit, claiming that it is dying and that it doesn't even want or really need new blood. Ultimately, the spirit takes not Astrid, but Victoria Van Gale, allowing for Johanna to return to her life, though her parents stay behind in Fairy World while Astrid is banished to the Overworld. Ultimately, it paints a somewhat conflicting portrait of what the nature of fairies in this world is, alluding to a lot of other real-world mythologies that share similar origins, but never quite explaining what the nature of this world is, why it's dying, and why it needed fresh blood to stay alive. More than anything, the story seems to tie the Fey Folk to the stories of higher divine beings falling in love with humans and other mythologies, coming from a higher dimension that is heavenly, yet in Hilda having some sort of dark secret that never quite gets explained. There are strong themes of this world being entirely ethereal, that to be there is to give up physical reality and to exist in a state of bliss, but in a state that lacks development. It is the death of that physical body that feeds the spirit of the island, but allows it to produce its Eden-like paradise complete with naturally growing fruits for the spirits to enjoy. However, the avoiding of humans but also seemingly abducting them seems rather contradictory, and it's hard to say what exactly was meant here at the end of the day. But what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts on the final season of Hilda and the Fey Folk in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time.